We're live. We're live from Hawaii. Welcome to the live stream, the live coaching. If this is your first time joining us, we do this every week at this time, every Sunday. It's free. It's available for everyone. We're mainly focused on wave sailing content, but I'm open to talking about freestyle and free ride as well. So come with your questions. You can post your questions in the comments or in the Facebook group. So the Facebook group up here is the home of this community. And there's a lot of good discussion that goes on in the group during the week. And the best part of the community is that it is a community. You know, it's not just me. It's not just my opinion. There are dozens, if not hundreds of really active members um, in the whole group, we're, I think we're, what, what are we, we're over 4,000 people. It's amazing. And um, yeah, but you guys are what make it so special. And so thank you for being a member of the community. And if you're not a member of the community, the link is, the address is there. All right. People are showing up. Dom Dom, your Hans, Owen, Sheldon, Bertrand. How's everyone doing? I'm a little bit of a zombie. Hello, Facebook user. Um, I'm a little bit of a zombie. I flew to Hawaii a couple days ago, so I'm on Maui. And it's a 12-hour time difference. It's about 24 hours of traveling. I had a lot to do to get ready. It was my birthday uh, the day before that I left, and I had my flight early in the morning the next day. Now, I travel a lot. I'm used to traveling with windsurfing gear. It's still hard. <laughs> traveling with board bags, traveling with gear is always hard. It doesn't matter how many times you do it. It does get a little bit easier once you start to know how to how to do it, the patterns and how to pack and how to deal with the airlines. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally jet lagged. I, I haven't been in the water yet. I've been on Maui for two days. Uh, and there's been no wind, but there are, there is good waves. looks like good surfing, but decent sized waves is pretty big. And, uh, like I don't even really feel comfortable driving, let alone getting in the water. So I've been, uh, just kind of taking it easy, doing some admin work, trying to get, get settled in here, trying to finish, um, you know, I've got the articles that are coming for the, uh, September newsletter, which are a little bit late, but they're all coming. And so I've been working on those and doing other things rather than, than getting in the water, just trying to adjust. Also, my body is super stiff. I flew on. This is something that if you, if you are flying for a windsurfing trip, especially if you're flying somewhere far and you only have a week or 10 days there, something to pay attention to. Um, so normally the last few years, most of the flights have been on the, um, on the 787, on the, the Boeing uh, 787, the Dreamliner which has more oxygen in the cabin. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it's, it's pressurized to a lower altitude is I think what's going on. And uh, on this trip, I flew over on the 777, the 777, uh, which has less oxygen in the cabin. And I think the jet lag, I mean, I don't have a large data set, but I think that the jet lag is definitely worse um, coming over on, on the 777. I, I feel definitely more out of it. My body feels more out of it. I didn't get much sleep the night before I left, which is also a, a mistake. I think you want to really, cause you're not going to get a lot of sleep on the long journey. So you want to get a lot of sleep the day before. Um, but it just with getting ready, packing and everything I had to do, I just didn't get much sleep. Um, but anyway, it, it's something that you really want to be careful of. There's a lot of injuries that happen after a long trip you're going for uh you know a trip to cape town or a trip to hawaii or a trip to mauritius or wherever else and you've only got a week there and so you really want to take advantage of your first day but you have to be careful a lot of top pro sailors victor fernandez robbie swift marcelo brown they have the rule that they never windsurf the day that they arrive they don't get in the water because there's so many things going on uh, but I think also you want to pay attention to like what kind of air, airplane you're on. You want to uh, make sure you're getting enough sleep. You want to make sure you're drinking enough water, you're hydrating, you're stretching enough uh, because those long trips are really hard on your body. Um, so 
just be careful. Uh, I, you know, there's so many stories of injuries like that, like Jagger Stone uh, going home to Australia after a long trip, first session, just does a little forward loop and, and hurt his foot pretty bad. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of stories like that. So you want to, you want to be careful if you're traveling for windsurfing um, you want to, you know, and if, if you have an extra, if you can book an extra day so that you have a day to rest, you should do that. Um, you know, if you have the choice with the different flights to go on a, a 787, you should do that. Um, make sure you get enough sleep the day before, make sure you're drinking enough water, uh, all of the above. All right, let's, let's get back to the chat. Hey, Axel. All right. So Axel, check out, um, so he's in Munich. Axel was on the, uh, one of the windsurfing masterclasses we did and he brought me this shirt as a gift which was pretty cool. Thank you, Axel. Um, hey, John, Matt. Matt was also there. John's also been on a masterclass, but last year, Matt was on the one with Axel. Um, Caro also was on uh, one of the masterclasses we did this year and last year. Caro is one of the top German windsurfers and also one of the top members of our community. So um, I saw some, some really sick photos, um, Caro, it looked good. I'm sorry to hear that you're actually sick as well. I hope you get better. Um, hey, Christoph in Santa Cruz. Um, nice. Those sound like fun conditions. Were you at uh, Davenport or Waddell? Hey, Suna. Um, nice. Nice to hear. Um, yeah. Hey, Scott. Uh, thanks, Dum Dum. Thanks, Ragnar. Hey, Bertrand. Oh, you were in a contest in Crete. How was it? Uh, and John, what were the conditions like that you sailed? Hey, Bart. Um, plenty of wind in Cornwall. Nice. Um, all right. So Crete had small waves. Nice ambience. Cool. Um, Hans is going to sail in Imud. In, in, I don't know how to say that. Ismuden tomorrow. Um, all right. All right. Is anyone else going? Um, uh, oh, no. Scott, I hope you feel better. Yep, totally agree with the dear Dreamliner. Adrian, hey, Adrian, thanks for tuning in. Dennis, um, oh no, traffic jam kept you off the water. Um, four sessions last week, that's pretty good. Um, so Christoph was in Waddell, not so into Davenport. I really like sailing at Waddell. It's super fun. It's been a few years since I've been in California, but Waddell is super fun. I, it's, I like it a lot. Um, I haven't sailed as much in Davenport. I don't know why, uh, but I've, I've sailed more, more in Waddell, quite a bit in Waddell, actually, and I love it. Um, hey, Alex. Alex is the Irish champion, one of uh, the user or community members in our group up, up here. And he, uh, yeah, won the Irish Irish championships. Um, nice. John had two good days. Jeff sailed five of the six days last week. Um, or five of the last six days. Uh, Jeff, where are you? Where are you windsurfing? And how is your body? You had some injuries. Are you uh, healed up? All right. Let's, let's jump in to the Facebook group. You guys know the drill. Hey, Mario, uh, you can ask me questions in the chat. Interrupt me. You guys know how it works. Uh, all right, let's load the Facebook group up. Just get that, just get that going. And then thank you everyone um, who is a member of the, uh, of the Patreon supporting the live stream and the coaching. Hey, Nicolas. Um, oh no, you cut your hand. Um, thank you everyone. Names are in the post. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's uh, get this Facebook group. Loaded. All right. All 
All right. Here we go. Do you like that view or that view better? Which is better? Probably like that is best, right? Um, yeah, Adrian, there's a Patreon. It's just Graham Ezzy on Patreon. And it supports this coaching. And then there's there's basically two levels. Or I'm thinking of adding a third level as well. Originally, I also had a third level that was just support, um, which I might add again. I, still figuring the whole thing out. It's, it's only been up for um, like a couple months. And But the main level is... Uh, it's a paid newsletter. So um, I do like five to six articles a month. The ones from September are a bit late, um, but they're coming just September was crazy with the world cup and the, and the master classes. Um, so like five to six articles a month, windsurfing coaching related. Uh, but some of, some of them are, are just um, some of them are also just entertainment. So like I did a, a long form interview with Robbie Nash up there also last month. It's like, 5,000 words. Um, so pretty, pretty long interview with Robbie, just about his, his life. And, uh, the, but then otherwise there's a lot of like coaching articles. Um, some of it is, is video based. Some of it is like written based. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, I see it as sort of a supplement to, to everything else that's going on, uh, but still figuring it out, still figuring out the, the format and how it all works. Um, so if you have ideas of what to add or how to do it, let me know because that's something that I want to improve and make, make great for you guys. Hey, Tomas, uh, Facebook user training forwards yesterday, five Oh cross on eight attempts, slap my side. Pretty good. Uh, light when not so scary, still not completed. How do you let go of a foot of water? Ooh, ouch, 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 but good effort. Hey, rich. All right. Let's jump in to the Facebook group. So first up, we've got a post from Ragnar. Yeah, the wind is there every day, except the days that he can go sailing. Yeah, that's that's difficult. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe other people have have some better answers. I don't know if there's a way that you can change change your schedule to to allow for for some. Uh, I don't know, some like work on the weekend so that you can get Monday off. I don't know. I don't know. Um, this is, this is a tough one. Maybe some other, uh, other windsurfers in the, in the corporate world have some advice for how to, how to make it work. All right. Next up, we got this post from, Max about Marine. Marine won her the, the women's pro fleet in the Tari Wave Classic. Marine is one of the original members of our community. Um, she's been on the master class and uh, yeah, frequent poster in the group. Uh, a little bit less frequent recently, but still, still very much involved. I um, was sharing a space with her in Silt in the World Cup where she was also competing. So right on. Um, all right, Tavi, how long are your underwater rides in seconds in your local wave spot? If you happen to fall in while on a wave and don't let go of the gear. And in the comments, do you have best practice that you try to follow? Or is it just let's go with the flow and see what happens? All right, I'm going to add an option. So I'm going to say about 15 seconds at Hokipa. In reality, it's actually probably less. Um, most places... Most places, like most places in Europe, the amount of time that you actually get held down is between three to five seconds. It's not very long. It feels longer, but it's actually just a few seconds. 15 seconds, 20 seconds is a really long hold down, really long hold down, um, which, which is crazy because, you know, if you're holding your breath for 20 seconds, it's not long at all uh but in the water it is i think the the i think jason polakow has the world record a thomas has the world record for the longest hold down ever and that was um he was toe surfing out at jaws and had a i think it's a two wave three wave it's a three wave hold down so he, he falls 
He's held down, doesn't come up. The next wave comes over him, doesn't come up. The next wave comes over him, and then he manages to come up. I've had one two-wave hold down in my life. Uh, and I, I've done a few like training. I, I really like to go out and swim when the waves are really big. Uh, swimming is, I think, kind of the number one th training you should do uh, if you want to get into bigger waves and riding bigger waves. You have to be comfortable swimming. You can start in the pool, but then swimming in the ocean, there's really no substitute for swimming in the ocean. I know that not every spot is, is safe to do a lot of swimming because it depends on the currents and the cold and whatever else. Uh, but if you can try to work on your swimming, um, that will give you more confidence. And also it just improves the safety of the situation because if you lose your gear, if something happens, it all comes down to how well you can swim. And having the confidence in your swimming is also really important because, uh, you know, panic, panic is what kills you. And most of the times in those situations, uh, so working on your swimming is the number one thing that you can do to get better in, in riding bigger waves or in improving in bigger waves. Uh, but anyway, so Jason Policow, I think that wipeout was like a minute and 15 seconds, which also isn't that long considering that, you know, all of you have the ability to hold your breath for two minutes. Um, you know, you might not be comfortable doing it, you know, might not be trained to, but you you're physically capable of doing that. But um, a minute, minute 15, minute 10 underwater is a lifetime. It's really a lifetime because, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're fighting, fighting the water. It's, yeah, there's, there's so much going on. But anyway, the point is, and I think that this is something that is, uh, I think should give you confidence is that most hold downs are really not very long. Like in Europe, really, it's under five seconds. If you're sailing in Tenerife, in Pozo, on the Baltic Sea, um, on the North Sea, it's, you know, it's, it's really more like five seconds. Okay, if you have some heavy spots, like Tavi is saying, okay, eight seconds, that's a bit heavier. Um, you know, at Hokipa, a long hold down is between 10 and 20 seconds. Uh, most of the hold downs are, I don't know, 10 seconds. And they feel longer, for sure they feel longer, but they're not that long. And when you watch the video, you realize that. Um, on Facebook, Facebook users are saying that um, I wish I knew who this was. Here, let me scroll up and see who I, I can see who it is. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can I see it? No, I can't see it. Um, anyway, anyway, let's get back to it. Sorry that StreamYard doesn't doesn't show who you are. Um, you've got to give them permission and. It's tricky. But anyway, he's saying that um, there's a video of Kai where Kai felt like he was going to die. But if you watch the video, it's only about 30 seconds underwater. And yeah, so 30 seconds is a lifetime underwater. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny how that works. Okay, so second part of the question is, do you have a best practice that you try to follow? Or is it just let go, let's go with the flow and see what happens? So I definitely do have best practices. One, hold on like your life depends on it because it might. So hold on to your gear like your life depends on it because it might, especially if you're on the outside, if it's stormy, if it's cold and if you let go, you lose your gear. You might not get to your gear again. You might not be able to swim to it. Uh, we had the situation with, with one of our, um, one of the windsurfers on one of the master classes, I don't want to give away any other details, who on the outside lost his gear, had to swim for a very long time. And luckily he's super fit, strong, mentally strong, and was able to handle it. Uh, but not everyone would handle the situation so well. And so I think you want to hold on to the gear. Like if you start, if it starts twisting and you feel like your bone is going to break, that's when you let go. But otherwise you hold on, hold on with your hands um, as much as you can. I try to get out of my foot straps. So I'm just holding on with my hands. Uh, and then I have a few other best practices as well. So oftentimes it, you fall under the sail. And so I get out of the foot straps and it's not such a nice feeling to be dragged under the sail. And so what I do is I'll pull in. So if this is my front hand, right? So the mast is here. What I'll do is I'll pull in on the front hand and push up with the backhand while I'm getting dragged by the whitewater. 
And what that does is then it flips, flips the rig sideways, like t- twists everything, so that then your body is on top of the sail, and then you, you're sort of going like a, on a sled, which then is a much safer position to be, to be in and to be dragged by the white water. You, you don't, you're not at risk of hitting the bottom. It's a lot easier to come up for air afterwards. Um, so that's, that's one thing I do. So, so first of all, hold on like your life depends on it because it might. And then two is if I'm under the gear getting dragged like this, what I'll do is I'll pull in with the front hand, push out with the back hand. And that flips, flips everything under the water so that you uh, get on top of it. And then the, the third thing is, uh, or the first thing, I mean, this is like, or the zero thing, like this is the most important thing is work on your swimming. The more, the more confident you are in your swimming, the, the better it will be in those situations. Owen is saying that the challenge is to get your heartbeat down. If your heartbeat is about 160, 180 while wave sailing, it is hard to have a 20 second hold down. That is a great point. That is a really great point. Um, I know from when I used to keep track of my heartbeat when I was windsurfing that it, I had a lot of like up and down. So I'd, I'd sit around like 80 or something and then, or, or 90, 80, 90, 89, and then it would go up to 160 and then it would come back down and it would go up. And then, uh, but what was really interesting is I had a, a super windy 4-2 session where I was like maxed out on a 4-2 and my heartbeat for the whole session was like over 150. And I didn't realize it at the, like, if, if you'd asked me if it was, my heart rate was different between the, um, between uh, that and a normal session, I would have said, no, it's the same, uh, but it was. So you have to be, be careful also if it's, if it's windier um, and really being aware of your heartbeat. I know some of you guys keep track of your heartbeat. You've got like a, a watch or some other kind of um, tracker and you can see what's, what's going on with your, your heartbeat. Uh, there are some techniques that you can use to help sort of keep your, keep your heartbeat down. So one is, is good regular breathing. Uh, two is just, just cardio training, right? Doing, doing some cardio. Uh, so like Owen says, um, just to make sure that you have a good cardiovascular system. Um, but yeah. All right, let's get back here. So Tavi saying that he tries to get out of the foot straps. Yep. So I think getting out of the foot straps is good and then hang on to the boom. Yep. Um, yeah. Eight seconds is, is a long time for a European hold down. Um, Yeah, don't let go. Um, yeah, so then John is sharing this experience where he got hit by the fins. Yeah, getting out of the straps is important, but also holding on to the boom because if you're holding on to the boom, it's pretty hard for your, your feet to get twisted up or... But like if you let go of your boom and you're still in the straps, that is a nightmare situation. You never, ever, ever, ever want to be in that situation where you're in the straps but not holding on to the boom. Uh, so hold on to the boom like your life depends on it because it might. Um, but do try to get out of the straps. All right, we already talked about this packing. Um, all right, Hans going for the forward loop. Right on, Hans. Uh, we talked about the forward loop in Denmark, but we never really had the conditions to go for it. But this looks awesome. Look at that. You're looking back. The hand looks like you're reaching back. You're pulling in. Um, you know, with, with this angle, we can't see that much, but it looks awesome. You're right. I mean, I see like if, if we're ticking boxes and the main boxes, as you guys know, are the wide grip, head going back, and not treating the loop like a somersault, but treating it like a 360. And I can see all of those boxes being ticked. You're rotating all the way around. So this looks this looks right on. Um, it's hard for me to see from this angle what you could do differently. You're throwing the rig forward and then pulling it in. You could look you could look more with your head, right? Because you're you're looking at your hand which is better than looking forward, but you're looking at your hand, you can look over your shoulder back to the beach and for longer. And that would help you get a little bit more rotation to sort of land on the tail. Um, all right, so what do, what do you say? So you're saying um, turning the head farther back. Yeah, so your self-coaching nailed what I was gonna say. 
Um, yeah, you are looking back though. You, you, you're not, you are looking back, but one thing you can try to do is look back to the beach. You could even start looking back to the beach, uh, if you're comfortable with it here. So as you're still on the wave, so as you're still on the water, as you're going up on the water, um, and, and that might help to look back earlier, uh, and also it will get you more, more rotation. Uh, but this looks solid, Hans, really, really good. Um, Wow. So Facebook is just saying they broke a foot strap. Um, oof. Yeah. I also break some foot straps sometimes with the washers or the inserts, pull out the inserts. Better that than your foot. Yeah, this is solid. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, just uh, try looking back even earlier, I would say. So doing everything else the same, but looking back like here as you're going up the wave would probably be um, probably be my my main main thing to work on. But otherwise, it looks solid. Getting a little bit more height. Also, I mean, I'm not sure what size you're on. This doesn't look like it's very windy. Um, if it's windier, this ramp is huge. Um, if it's light, this is not a very big ramp. And you don't need much of a ramp. You don't need much air to do a forward. But if you have a little bit more air, you'll, you'll really land this quite solid. Um, the other thing is you could stay sheeted in a little bit longer. You're sheeting, you're sheeting out, like you're anticipating the landing and you're sheeting out. Uh, but then you're also kind of a little bit under rotated. So if you sheet in a little bit longer, that also might help. Uh, but overall, right on. And I, I think you, you kind of know what to work on. Oh, you're on a 4.2. So it is actually windier than... Then I thought that looked more like a big sale. Hey, Cell, welcome. Uh, but Hans, do you feel like you have a, a clear idea of what to keep working on? Um, also, when you're when you're at sort of this level with a move where you're you're really working it um, and, and sort of getting it getting the rotation right, it's a lot about repetitions. Uh, so you know, I can tell you a few little technical things that will help, but the most important things is just doing the reps. And so you, you have the basic movement, you have the basic structure, you're doing way more right than wrong. So you just have to put in the repetitions and then you'll start to get it. Hey, Max. Um, so it's, it's really about repetitions. And, and this is true for a lot of moves, right? So I, I can give you the tips and the technique and the concepts, uh, which are really important. But once you start putting those into practice, it's not magic, right? It, it doesn't happen right away. I mean, some of, some of these things, hopefully uh, you can pick up really quickly, but there's no substitute for repetitions. Uh, so like Hans, the number one thing for you to do right now, I mean, yes, you can look back farther, you can get a little bit more height, uh, you can sheet in longer, all of those things technically will help you. But the most important thing for you right now is just doing more of these, just do more, just do more get in the repetitions. Uh, and, and I think that that will actually be what helps you improve the most. And so if it's difficult to get in repetitions, find out why it's difficult. If you're only doing one or two a week or only one or two a day uh, or whatever it is, find a way that you can do 10 a week or 10 a day, right? Like, uh, you know, if you, if you want to really, really get the forward loop, you've got to find a way to, to do the repetitions. Uh, which and is also true of anything, whether it's the tack, whether it's the jive, whether it's something in the way writing, uh, right? That the technique is important, the concepts are important, uh, and so are the repetitions. All right. Next up, we've got another post from Hans about his wave writing. All right, so let's read, let's read the text and then we'll go through the video. So Hans says he's been working on points from the master class in Denmark that he was a part of. He was very impressed with the masterclass and how it accelerated his learning. Thank you, Hans. Um, two points that he's happy with. He's being more picky with the waves, choosing and waiting for the best waves really paid off yesterday. Good job. And staying closer to the wave face to harness more of the wave's energy. Thanks, Suna, for making this visibly clear to me. I now ride a little more Suna style. That's great. You know, one of the, the hidden benefits of doing the masterclass uh, is the community and, and the group uh, there's, there's so much value in, in getting to know your, the other windsurfers and the networking and 
you know, making new friends and, and learning things from each other. So right on. Uh, so then Hans goes on with side offshore. I find it more difficult to keep distance to the sail as you don't need to open it as much. And with the long waves, I like to take less risk to get longer rides. Any tips? Welcome. Also uh, added an aerial attempt. Tips. Welcome. But one of my first attempts and decided to go for it. No preparation. All right. Let's watch the videos. Oops. Why is that not play? Come on. All right. All right. So he's setting up for this wave. Kind of float and ride conditions. Looks fun. Picking up some speed. Here he's staying higher on the wave. Hit it. <laughs> Hit it. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. This is good. I mean, you could have hit this actually at 28 seconds, but uh, but no, it's it looks awesome. Uh Yeah, wow. I love, I mean, you're getting so many turns, right? Uh, I like the flow that's going on here. So here you're just kind of setting up, getting speed. I like that. And you come up, you know, onto the wave face, building speed. I like that, working on your speed. Yeah, you could hit that, hit that little corner, corner pocket section. Uh, but all right, here, getting a high five. Boom. White water high five, picking up speed. Get another high five. Boom. So what I'd like you to do, so if it, I think the next step here, I mean, this is beautiful. I love this. Oh, there's a lot, a lot that I can see that is, is being put into practice. Um, I think one of the next steps is trying to tighten up some of these turns and so make sections that you feel like you can't make. So like, for example, you can hit this, this one that's coming at you. Oh, you do hit this one, but you can also hit this next one too. There's more than enough time to get this next corner pocket. And I know you feel like you can't, but if you just think that you can and just aim your board there, you will make it, you'll get there. So just like, bam, bam, it just... It's just a matter of reacting a little bit more quickly and just aiming your board for that section. But you have the ability, you have the skill. Uh, so that's great. So that's, I think, your next step is to try and tighten these up. So try to make some of the sections that you think that you can't make. Go for the sections that you think you can't make. Um, Adrian's asking what the fin setup is on the starboard. Um, I don't think this is a starboard. This is a witchcraft, um, right? Or is it a starboard? No, it's a witchcraft. Um, all right, let's watch this wave. So that was more, a little bit more top to bottom on the on the cutback. You've got a few people in your way, chopping it up. So these turns are more, oh, nice. A little bit more radical in the turns, like in terms of uh, the other ones are more like down the line turns. But I don't know, I like the other wave a lot. I like the flow. I like the contact with the lip. Um, but it's nice to see the mix up of these two different kinds of, of turns. It's hard that you've got the people going out in your way, makes it difficult. Um, I like that you're not twisting your body like we talked about. Um, I think the main thing to think about is like what I said on the other wave, which is trying to tighten things up a little bit. So going for the sections that you think you can't make. And it's just a matter of pointing the board there. You just think, all right, I've just got to point the board to this section. No matter, I don't know how that's going to work or how that's going to happen, but I'm just going to do it. Um, and it will work. 
Uh, it just starts with that, with that intention, with that desire. Uh, this is a difficult wave because you've got so many people coming out, which then chops, chops it up for your bottom turn. Uh, I like the high five that's going on here. That's a difficult section as well to hit the one that's on the other side of the whitewater. Um, but I like that. And you're kind of coming around, completing the turn, which is nice. Um, all right, let's, let's watch the aerial. Boom. Yeah, this is a great start. And, you know, I, I think one of the main things with, with learning the aerial is just to get in some repetitions in the beginning, just to start feeling it. And this is the kind of section that you want to look for. This is the wind direction you want to be doing them in. Um, if you, if the wave, so this wave is a little crumbly, if it's throwing a little bit more, like it was in some of these other waves, it will also be easier because then it projects you more and you get more projection. And the aerial is all about projection uh, from the wave, not about, not about jumping. Um, but um, so the, the other thing is you want to think about traveling down the line and keeping your momentum down the line. Uh, rather than trying to come back around, even for tweaked aerials, your momentum is traveling down the line. You're not, you're not ever coming back up the line. Uh, that's one of the, the big mistakes that people make. And you're doing it a little bit here. Uh, but, but this is a great first attempt. I think just get in some more reps. Really think about, um, one, using the power of the wave to project you. And two, keeping that momentum going down the line. Um, hey, Daniel. Um, Adrian is asking, is a quad or a thruster better in those conditions? I don't know. I, I think it really depends on, on, on personal preference. Um, oh, I don't know what to do there. Um, cool. Stefan is also there. So Stefan was in week one. Um, nice. All right, next up, we've got this video from Bart. He says, question one, on adapting to stronger wind, I'm sailing so much better on 5056 than on my 4045. Any tips on how to adapt to sailing in strong wind? Question two, I have added a little backside run looking to get higher off the lip jumps. Should I angle the bottom of the board uh, so the wind catches it? The wind is almost fully onshore in this case. Uh, I think the most important thing, Bart, for, for doing the backside errors is the contact with the lip. Um, I wonder, Matt, if you're still in the chat, Matt had a really great backside air in Denmark on the masterclass. Um, and I, I wonder what, you know, he had some that worked and some that didn't. And I wonder what, what he thinks helped for making it work or not. Um, I think the most important thing is getting the, the timing with the wave, getting the contact with the lip. Um, all right, Greg, Greg, let's, Let's jump in on Greg's comment. So Greg says, hi, hey. and his first real hold down was last Saturday at Maharoti Reef in Donegal, Ireland. Nearly lost where was up and where was down and wouldn't resurface in the whitewater. Yeah, so that can definitely happen. And the more big wipeouts you have, the more comfortable you get in the situation, the more you're used to then figuring out where is up. Like I remember when I was a teenager, I had so many hard wipeouts where I didn't know where was up and getting smashed into the reef and I don't know, really tough. And I, I think that the more experience you have, the better you get at it. So then you don't have as hard of wipeouts anymore um, because you're, you're more aware of where your body is. You know how to kind of position yourself so that you're not getting drilled as hard. You're not getting pushed as deep. Um, but staying calm is the most important thing. And working on your swimming and swimming in waves uh, is, is a great way to do that. I'm glad you're okay, uh, Greg. Um, and also glad that you had that experience because I think that will make you a stronger windsurfer because um, you came out of it. You did good. All right. So let's look at the comments. Um, so Hans asked, why did the big sales feel better? Um, and he gives his, his opinion on big versus small sales. Um, Rich is saying that wide grips can help give you more control. Um, Tomas wants to know why, what is working better on the big sales? 
Um, and Bart says, it is the wind factor for sure, as I'm lucky enough to be able to sail more sheltered wave spots when the exposed beaches get big. Everything from jives to tacks to jumps to wave rides feels so much more difficult. Um, I, I, I know what you mean. I think that wave riding gets more difficult sort of under 4.2. Um, and like my preferred sizes for riding waves, especially like really performance wave riding is like 4.750. Um, and once, once you go smaller, then it's hard to get the same amount of contact with the board. Uh, and then once you go bigger then the sail is so big, it is kind of getting in the way. So I think there really is something to, you know, that sort of 4.750 range for me. Um, you know, if you're a different weight, it's going to be a different sale size. Uh, but uh, anyway, let, let's, let's watch the video. All right. That's a nice high five. I like that. Boom. Good backside high five awareness. And another one. Oh, I like how snappy this is. Yeah, Bart. Ooh, look at this carve. So sail goes back, body goes forward. Sail goes back, body goes forward. And then body leans forward. Sail pushes forward. Get the high five. And again. This is great. I really like those turns. I like I like how carvy they are in the beginning. Um, and I like the high five. Um, for getting more height, it's a little bit difficult because these waves are so mushy if you want to get some actual air off the lip. Because uh, ideally you want to have, have a bit of power in the wave to help you, help you get some air. Um, or the wind to help you get air, and then you're kind of doing like a shove it off the lip. Um, yeah. Uh, just back to the question about confidence and getting worked. Um, Dom Dom's saying that he can hold his breath for five minutes, um, and but once his heart rate is high, he can only do 10 seconds. Makes sense. Adrian is saying that Robbie Nash is the master of backside. Backs the sail on floats, looks super smooth. Yep, and those like floaty backsides, if there's wind, you can use that same technique to get a lot of air um, even, even when the waves are mushy like this. But for doing the backside aerials, it's a bit hard if the, if the wave is super mushy. Um, otherwise, you can kind of sail into the, into the lip. So rather than doing such a carving bottom turn, you can sail into the lip and you're looking for those, those corner pockets and then you're going to use sort of get the get the high five. So you, you're positioning the bottom of your board, the angle of your board, uh, so it aligns with the the plane of the wave. And then sort of doing a, a jump, but unlike a jump where you're going out, you're really sort of letting you're going with the flow. You're not really pushing too hard against it because if you push too hard against it, you can really disconnect with the wave and actually not get very high. Um, in terms of tips to adapting to strong winds, um, I would say you want to make sure that you have a small enough board. Like one thing, if your board is too big, then you're not going to be comfortable in the in the strong winds because it's going to be moving all over the place. Um, so I don't know what your high wind board is like, Bart, what your gear is like, but that's, that's a big one. If you feel like the nose is sliding around in the high winds, you can move your mass track, uh, your, your base farther forward to help keep the nose down. Uh, you can try putting uh, your your fins and foot straps farther back as well on the board. Give it a little bit more control. You, then you're kind of pushing the tail a bit, but you can have a bit more control on the board. So the gear is really important. Um, some sails also just don't work as well in strong winds. Uh, but anyway, um, I think those are a few few things to think about. All right. Nick asks about cameras. So he's looking for a camera uh, to share with Paul so they can film each other because the GoPros and stuff are good, but only up to a certain point. Great, great question. Love this question uh, because footage, seeing yourself is the best way to learn uh, before any coaching, before anything else, just seeing yourself is so huge. 
and the action cams, the GoPros, the Insta 360s are great. Uh, but seeing yourself from like a third person point of view is the ideal for, for coaching. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have a uh, good zoom on the camera. So you want at least uh, like a 20 times optical zoom. Um, there are some different camcorders options. I'll post, I'll post a few different options in this thread. I think there's a good Sony. There's a good Canasonic. Um, oh, this is an old post. This is an old post um, that's coming up. So I did post a few things already. So Nick, did you, did you get something? If so, you want to follow up. Um, okay. So this is, sorry, this is an old post. Nick is following up. Um, so they got a Panasonic camcorder, um, but it seems to work well. All right, Nick, let's see some footage right on. Okay. So, sorry, I didn't understand this. I thought this was an, a new post, but this is an old post. Uh, so Nick already did get the camera right on. I want to see some footage. Okay. All right. Next up, we've got this post. Um, yeah, Bart, a hundred liters on a four O. I mean, how much do you weigh, Bart? How much do you weigh? And, and Hans, I know that you can handle those big boards in the strong winds, but I think that's really an anomaly. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe with those flex tails, you can really handle it in, in any winds, but for most people, most boards, being on a hundred liter board on a 4.0 is not the right combination. But Bart, how much do you weigh? I mean, are you a hundred kilos? If you're a hundred kilos, then I would say, if you're anywhere from 90, let's say 95 kilos to a hundred kilos, then it kind of makes sense. Okay, so you're 85 excluding the wetsuit. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I think it's kind of on the edge whether 100 liters is too big for you. And I know I know that those boards are good in high wind. I've seen Hans ride his board in on a 3.7, I think. Uh but I don't know. I don't know. I I I I think it really is more of the exception rather than the rule to ride such a big board in such strong winds. And if you feel uncomfortable, that would be the first thing that I would, I would change and, and just try a smaller board because what you're ex describing that discomfort is exactly what it feels like when you have too big of a board and, and too strong winds. So I just would I just borrow a board from someone, just try it a smaller board and strong winds and see how it feels just for a few runs, but just to see if that feels better. Uh, maybe it doesn't, but maybe it does. All right. We've got this video from Tim. Make this a little bigger. All right. So Tim, where is this? So he wants his wave riding to be more radical. Where's the spot? I want to know where the spot is. Looks fun. Nice. Getting some contact with the lip. The wave really starts to set up down on the bottom. Okay, so the number one thing is just timing. So Tim, you're, you're racing the wave a little bit too much. Um, and if you go slower, um, well, all right, let me rephrase that because you don't want to go slower. You want to keep your speed, but you don't want to race in front of your wave. And so instead of going straight and fast, you want to think about doing more U-shaped turns and then also um, coming back around to the whitewater. So, okay, in this first turn, you go a little bit early, so you could go a little bit later, but let's just let's just leave this Let's just assume that you, you start the wave with this timing. What I'd like to see is instead of looking down the line and thinking about the next turn, complete your cutback. And so you can really push on your heels, complete the cutback. Because, like, okay, the cutback starts here, but before it even 
starts really, you're already thinking about the next turn and you're already going down the line. So really think about pressing on those heels, doing a hard cutback, coming all the way back around, try to come back to that white water, to the power source of the waves. We always want to be connected to the power source of the wave. The power source of the wave is where the magic happens. You want to always be thinking about where, where is the power of the wave. So if you then are back farther, then that sets you up better for then this next next section. So it, it starts to sort of wall up, um, but luckily this wave is, is kind of mushy and slow. Um, so if you were a little bit farther back, you'd have also more speed and then you set up to then hit this section a little bit more as a back door, like looking at that corner pocket like we talk about, uh, which, which would be a very nice way to ride this wave, also very radical. Um, you hit that turn and you'd be able to come around for another turn. And then the same thing, you don't want to rush, rush into your next turn. So you kind of stay on your heels, complete that cutback, come back to the white water um, and then come around for your next turn. So the, the number one thing to do is, is think about completing your cutbacks more. So think about staying on those heels. Um, so, okay. So I, I see, I missed this when I clicked on this. Your question is also, how do you get the board to come back? further in the top turn uh, it's just to want want it to so you, you're looking you're looking down the line as you're and sort of pumping down the line as you're um as you're starting the cutback you really think about sitting into the cutback staying on those heels getting the butt low and trying to come back around to the white water um, you know one of the things that we we talk about is that you don't want to be looking too much with your head actually in the cutback because that can uh, twist your body. But just to start, you might want to think about looking with your head, really think about staying on those heels and really think about coming all the way back to the white water of the wave um, and really having that intention because um, I know you want to come further around in the, in the top turn, um, but your in, intention is to go straight out of that top turn into the next bottom turn. And so it's, it's really realizing that you have to stay in the cutback a lot longer and really think about coming all the way around to the white water. You can look back at that on the white water. Um, it, it's, so it's really just about that awareness. Um, and then yeah, staying, staying closer to the power of the wave. Um, cool. All right. Um, but I think it's really less about technique and it's more just about uh, positioning and so if you and and if you think that you need to come around more in the cutbacks and stay in the cutback a lot longer rather than rushing into your next bottom turn then you're not trying to race down the wave your cutbacks will be much better just just one day to the next all right thank you for the birthday wishes um Adrian is asking, would it be helpful to stay high in the cutback to get back to the pocket? I find that helps me. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think that I think you really just don't want to be rushing into your bottom turn. So you want to really think about staying, staying in the cutback longer, staying on those heels, trying to come back to the whitewater. Uh, because like we we what we saw in that wave, and it's a common, common issue, is even like before the cutback is even started, Tim is thinking about going into the next bottom turn and starts cheating in and pulling in and looking down the line. And so really just staying in that cutback, really thinking of, that your goal is to come all the way back to the white water. Um, and so just start with that concept and then go from there. Uh, Marius is looking to meet up with people in Handsome. I wonder how that went. Um, Marine just... This is a post about Terry Wave Classic, which she won right on. Um, all right, Tim wants to know about the most popular consistent winter spots near uh, Bezier's France, Grisson, Bucat area. Um, he's there in January. Good accommodation. All right, I'm not an expert here, uh, but a few people have posted and... Yeah, there are spots around the area, but yeah, I'm not an expert. So we'll see what other people say. All right, we've got this 
follow up from Paul. We were talking about for loops with him last week um, or a few weeks ago, and he wasn't looking back enough. Here he is looking back more. Um, I want to see that wider grip, this hand gripping wider. Um, but great progress. Love to see it. Getting a little bit more height will also help. Looks like your nose is uh, hitting hitting the water. But um, getting getting the wider grip will actually solve that because then you'll go less vertical and more horizontal. And so even with the same amount of height, you're not going to be hitting the nose. Uh, if you come out of the straps, it's often because in the forward loop, it's often because you hit the nose. It slows down the board. But your body and sail are rotating faster. So then you come out of the straps. Uh, and often the answer for that is either more height or more horizontal in your rotation. Um, but getting getting the wider grip will make it more horizontal. But looks awesome. All right, we already talked about this. Uh, we already talked about this. We already talked about this. Um, all right, we've got a quish, question from Mikhail uh, about fin size. Does it make sense to change fins on a given board when changing sail size? Isn't size only dependent on board shape and speed? If my average speed is 18 knots on my board, does it matter if I'm on a 4.0 or a 5.0, regardless of fin choice? Um, it depends. I think I think the answer is that it depends. Sometimes you do want to change your fin size based on sail size. And this is especially true if you're going to really big sails. So for example, if you're going from a 4.0 to a 5.8, you probably want to change your fins um, to something bigger. But a lot of the time, you know, the fin size, I've heard some people say, oh, fin size only depends on the board or fin size only depends on the sail, which is not true. It, it depends on all of those factors, plus the current, plus the waves. You know, if you need a lot of drive in the waves, you're going to need more fin area. Uh, so it it really depends. Um, between 4.0 and 5.0, it's not a huge difference in size. Um, I would, I use the same fin size is for that, for those like on a four or a five O, but maybe three, seven compared to five, five, I might consider changing my fins at the moment. I don't, um, but it's something to experiment with. I think this is an easy thing to experiment with and that's a good habit to get into. So this is one of the recurring themes in the coaching is you want to play with your gear. You want to experiment. You want to figure out what works, what doesn't. And just test it, test it, test it, test it. So Michael, test it and let us know. Um, Cause I want to, I want to hear, does it feel better if you go on a bigger fin on your 5.0 than on your 4.0? Um, in general, I think with that small of a change, you don't need to, uh, but try it. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Um, Kevin wants some information about Ibiquira, Ibiquira in Brazil. Um, I think September to December is the right time of year to go. I think that's, I think that's a good time. Um, yeah, uh, I'll reach out to Cali. Alex recommends reaching out to Cali. I'll reach out to Cali, see what he says. Um, all right, Jeff is excited to say that he finally tried some tacks on port this weekend. Nice, and made several straight away. I've never done them in that direction. I've always been hesitant. One of the things that helped was speeding straight towards lands. There was a spot that had only about one centimeter of trot right next to the sand. It forced me to make an extremely quick turn while thinking of absolutely nothing else so that I did not hit the sand at full speed. I was so surprised that I made several. When I got home, I decided to take some videos such as this one and flip it so that I get to watch myself doing it correctly on my bad side. Hopefully this will work as a training method. I just thought I would bring this up as an interesting idea. Uh, but these are actually starboard tacks. Yeah, awesome. Um, Jeff was a member of our tacking masterclass. So Jeff has all the information needed to um, tack like a pro, right on. Here's a discussion about bottom turns. I think we already talked about this. We did talk about this. Um, Alex won the Irish championship in the Mayhem Mayhem, right on Alex. Super solid, we're all proud of you, good job. Um, all right, I posted this video. I said I was going to do this. So this is a video of uh, me interviewing some of these top freestylers. We've got Teddy Franz, Anthony Runes, Sarah Keita, Dieter van der Eiken, Nico Akajan, and Ricardo Campello uh, giving their top tips for the Vulcan. There's some good tips in here. Um, so if, if you want to work on your Vulcans, 
check out this video. <laughs> Funny post from John. All right, I think we talked about this last week. Yeah, we talked about this last week. All right, Mateo, I want to hear how your progress goes. All right, looks like we're caught up. Where did we talk about this from, from Scott? I don't really remember this. So let's, we can look at this again. Looks nice. So 5.8 freestyle waveboard. I'm surprised you're able to do these turns on a freestyle waveboard. I think generally freestyle waveboard is very hard to get radical. Um, if you want to get more radical, getting a wider grip is going to be huge. So you want this hand to be back somewhere right here. Um, and that will help with, with any board. And then really aiming, aiming for tighter turns. So this bottom turn goes straight. You want to think about keeping it in a U shape. Um, so like there you've got that straight section. So really keeping it in a U. And then the cutback really sinking down, getting your butt low and sinking onto your heels. Um, it's doing a doing these turns on a freestyle waveboard is hard. Um, so right on, I think I think the two main the three main things we're going to talk about three things is getting that wider grip in the bottom turn. So even wider. I see you're reaching back. That's good, but even wider. And then um, really thinking about doing more U shaped bottom turns. Uh, you like you want to avoid the straight lines. Uh, and then on the cutbacks, really uh, sinking low, getting your butt down and staying on the heels. And then one fourth thing, uh, I don't want to add too many things, but just one fourth thing is these are great sections to work on the high five. And so you don't want to do the turn in front of the white water. You want to come up, hit the white water and let the white water do the cutback for you. All right. We already talked about this. We already talked about this, 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 this. We're caught up right on. Whew. Okay. All right. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, that's it for today. If you want to support, check out the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Grammezzi. And if you have advice or uh, wishes or any kind of thing for the Patreon, let me know. Uh, as always, post in the Facebook group uh, with your photos, questions, videos, all of the above, and we'll discuss it during the week. And then I'll talk about it next week, Sunday. I hope you have a windy week. Hope you can get on the water. I'll be over my jet lag by next week, and hopefully I'll have had some sessions as well. All right, everyone, take care. Have a good week, and I'll see you next week.